In organized car races, we have a long rap sheet of swindlers, hucksters, and con artists who are popular and have associated themselves with racing. Some with different get-rich-quick schemes, others with the ambition that is too good to be true, and a lot of them leaving a trail of bounce checks and many broken promises in their wake. And then there's Larry L.W. Wright, who for about 40 years stood as one of the most dubious and mysterious characters in the history of NASCAR. Larry Wright once entered the 1982 Talladega 500 with a team before dropping out of the race and disappearing. Surprisingly, 40 years after, Wright has re-emerged. Hello guys, and welcome to Cracked History Facts. Today, we look at the story of Larry Wright, the man that once disappeared and was found again. Let us begin by answering this question. For those that are curious to know, let's simply say Larry is the man who talked his way into NASCAR. NASCAR, with its crowded tracks and high speeds, is a very dangerous sport, and the requirements for anyone to compete are not easily earned. A competitor needs to travel a long path to earn a competitive license, and most drivers begin while they're teenagers. The competition is not just fierce, but also expensive. A NASCAR hopeful needs a lot of sponsors and finances to enter this race series and compete at over 200 miles per hour. This makes Wright's story almost unbelievable. Here was a man that had no money, zero racing record, and no sponsors. But somehow this man was able to race at the Talladega Super Speedway in 1982, after which he disappeared from NASCAR. Astonishingly, many people don't know anything about this mysterious con artist. All we know of Larry Wright came from this one event. Wright was an accomplished driver and a very confident individual. Most people believe he was a small-time racer that was looking to break into the big time and had prepared to utilize unorthodox methods to accomplish that. Well, the facts of this strange event are known from the testimony of those that encountered him. It was in the year 1982, about two weeks before the Winston 500 race at the popular Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama in the United States of America, when Bernie Terrell was confidently approached by a stranger. Then, Bernie Terrell was in charge of a marketing firm, and the stranger asked him for resources to sponsor his ride in the upcoming race. The stranger claimed he was an experienced NASCAR driver and that he was part of a racing team called Music City Racing. This pretense eventually worked, and Bernie Terrell gave him the resources he needed for buying a car and also to hire a team. The confident stranger, who said his name was L.W. Wright, was given about $7,500 to cover all the expenses for the race weekend, as well as another amount to purchase a truck, car, and trailer for the race. Wright then approached a man named Sterling Marlin, a driver who was yet to break into NASCAR, to buy a race car. Though Sterling doubted his intentions, he was able to sell him a car for $17,000 in cash with about a $3,700 check covering the remaining cost. Well, whether out of doubtfulness or some level of eagerness, Sterling Marlin wanted to serve Larry Wright as his racing crew chief. Wright confidently agreed and signed him on for the race weekend. Wright called a Nashville, Tennessee newspaper popular reporter named Larry Woody to help promote his race. Wright confidently told the reporter that he was about to participate in the Talladega race for his team and that his team name was Music City Motorsports. Wright also claimed that his car was sponsored by known country music stars Merle Haggard and T.G. Shepard. But after this story was published, T.G. Shepard's attorney called Woody and told him that T.G. Shepard is not in any way sponsoring Wright. The attorney also claimed he had never heard of the name L.W. Wright. Larry Woody called Wright for clarity and to verify the story. Wright's smart response was that the sponsoring decision was completely premature, and he later admitted that he didn't participate in any grand national series, but had taken part in some lower series races. The next challenge for Wright was to obtain a license, which is vital for competing in the NASCAR race. There are lots of reasons for Wright not to have that license, but this smart con artist didn't let that stop him. Larry Wright elegantly walked into the office responsible for the issuance of NASCAR credentials and convinced all the officials about his racing records and history. Somehow, without providing any form of evidence of his racing record or ability, he was issued a license to race. On the race day, as the cars were lined up on May 2, 1982, L.W. Wright was at the back of the grid. Irrespective of a crash during his practice, Wright had managed to qualify in 36th place out of the 40 drivers that raced that day, including popular names such as Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt. We all know that NASCAR drivers race at super high speeds and near each other, so it's important that each driver has a lot of confidence in those around them. 
For an inexperienced driver with no records, joining the race is very dangerous. For all the drivers on the track and a risk to life. In the event, Larry Wright was well off the pace. From his initial position of 36th, he was slower than the other cars around him drastically dropping to 39th before he was ordered to end his race after 13 laps for being too slow. Astonishingly, the race is all the media know about Wright. He disappeared from the Talladega Super Speedway, leaving his car behind and vanishing into thin air. Wright was not confronted for any of his actions, nor was he apprehended. Wright didn't give a single interview about the race. The man simply walked away from the car and was never seen again. L.W. Wright has become the D.B. Cooper of racing, which is about America's only accomplished skyjacking in history. And, like Cooper, this is a big mystery. What happened 40 years after he was found? Wright was found again earlier this year, and he revealed in an interview that his identity is Larry Wright, and he was able to verify his identity by showing the racing suit from Talladega which matched the photos of the 1982 event. The now 73 years old, Wright claimed he is in poor health and he desires to offer his side of the story while he could. He claimed that he purchased a car from Cuckoo Marlin under the condition that Cuckoo Marlin's crew pitted the car at its first race and he painted it black with the number 34, alleging he picked the number as a nod to longtime driver Wendell Scott as well as his age at that particular time. Wright claimed he had been involved in many country music businesses as a bus driver and that he was offered financial assistance to race Talladega by Merle Haggard and others. He also claimed that he had never been to Talladega before participating in the race, and that he was overwhelmed by the scale and size of the racetrack he was going to compete on. Wright said, I remember pulling into the infield that day and standing at the end of the track and looking down it. And I looked over at my brother and I said, Lord have mercy, there ain't no way. He continued by saying, You think about holding that car, the pedal flat on the floor around this track. That straightaway is almost a mile long. How much can that car gain before you go into that turn? And that was my first thought. I got off by myself that day, and I said, Lord, I'm down here, but I'm gonna need some help. And I didn't tell nobody else that. He also disputed parts of the story that surrounds him, specifically as it concerns the money he owed to Marlin, NASCAR, team owner, and investor B.W. Terrell. L.W. Wright claimed he paid for his NASCAR license in cash, and he also agreed to pay Marlin immediately after the race was over. He classified the nature of his financial problem as being characterized by many unpaid bills from sponsors that later backed out rather than bounced checks. And also he claimed that stories about the amount of money he owed were an absolute myth. Wright said, the people that were putting money into the car to catch up, these promised notes or bills didn't. When we didn't get to run the race, they just quit. So it was left on me. He continued by saying, if you could find somebody that said I owed them $30,000, you tell them and I'll face them. I want to see who they are, and I want to know how they come about. If that makes them stutter, you know what I'm talking about, okay? This incident is one of the most strange stories in the long and beautiful history of NASCAR. Well, as for the 1982 Talladega 500 race itself, it was won by Daryl Waltrip. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Bye, and until next time.